Welcome to the solution to the 2021 AP Statistics FRQ exam, question number two. In this video, we're gonna fully explain it, covers experimental design and a little bit of inference. This is one of those problems where there's no math. It's all writing and all understanding. So for those of you AP stats lovers, you know that there's a lot of questions that do involve a ton of writing. So let's just dive right into this problem. All right, researchers will conduct a year long investigation of walking and cholesterol levels in adults. They will select a random sample of 100 adults from the target population to participate as subjects in the study. All right, before we actually dive into the first question, let's talk about this real quick. So they're obviously looking and seeing if there's a relationship between walking and cholesterol levels. So we could think right away we have in our explanatory variable is walking. Our response variable is the cholesterol levels. Now we do have a random sample of adults. Now because it's random, that's awesome, right? That means that we could actually apply what we learn from this study to all adults from the target population. As long as you select from your population randomly, you could infer to that target population. Now, the only thing I'm missing, and this is obviously just two short sentences, this does not seem to be an experiment. It might have come across as an experiment, but it's really not fully an experiment. This is really just an observational study. They selected people and they're just going to observe their walking habits and their cholesterol levels. We're about to read a little bit more into that right now. So part one says one aspect of the study is to record the number of miles each subject walks per day. The researchers are deciding whether to have subjects wear an activity tracker to record the data or have subjects keep a daily journal of the miles they walk each day. Describe what bias could be introduced by keeping the daily journal instead of wearing the activity tracker. So once again, why this is more an observational study is, well, first and foremost, they didn't have the 100 subjects, 50 do this, 50 do that. There was no comparison. All, all 100 people are participating in the study. There's nothing going on of like, hey, you guys are getting this treatment, you guys are getting this treatment. And there's really no treatment being given. Like they're trying to determine if walking has an impact on cholesterol levels. It wasn't like there was a second group that we're gonna to compare to that doesn't walk at all for, you know, for a whole year, which would be ridiculous. So for that reason, this is definitely an observational study. Now they are asking the people to track their number of miles they walk. And you could say, well, they're making them do that. That makes this an experiment because you're not just observing them, you're making them do that. Well, I agree, but these people did um, they were selected randomly, and I'm assuming they had to sign some type of waiver that agreed, that allowed them to agree to participate in it. And as long as, you know, what makes an experiment is that you got to have that comparison. You 50 people get this, you other 50 people get this. That's actually not what's happening here. So that's going to come into a part a little bit later. But this question just wants us to focus on what type of bias would there be if we have people keep a daily journal instead of wearing an activity tracker. So let's dive right into that actual answer. So first it did say what type of bias. So keeping a daily journal could introduce response bias. Make sure you answer the question. I get a lot of kids that write great answers, but they never actually answered the question of the problem. And it did say what type of bias. Now, remember response bias, give you a quick little definition here, is anything that could cause a person's response to be untruthful or biased. So the idea here is that they're self-reporting and some subjects may not remember the exact amount they walk. So they're like, I think I walked a mile versus no, they actually walked uh, 0.9 miles or something like that. Um, or maybe they just lie about the walk, you know, the amount that they walk to either look good or, or maybe just because they forgot. Like, oh, I forgot to walk today. I, I'm just going to say I walked two miles. So if many subjects have this bias, then they could either underreport or overreport the number of miles walked per day. Now, all of a sudden, our data is becoming biased because it's not truthful. This would result in the estimate of the mean miles walked to be either too high or too low. If a lot of people overestimate by maybe bragging about how many miles they walk, then we're going to get values that are too high. Or if a lot of people don't quite know and they're actually giving numbers that are really low, then that could create an underestimate. Now, wearing a fitness tracker would likely provide a more accurate record of the daily miles walked by each subject to give a more accurate mean. You could still find things that are wrong with the fitness tracker. Well, maybe Sally put the fitness tracker in her car and then it recorded the car going 25 miles and she actually didn't walk it. Okay, I get that. But they're just trying to say that, listen, recording it on your own could cause a lot of bias. Whereas if we make you wear a fitness tracker, now all of a sudden, you know, it's one step closer to getting more accurate results. 
So the key answer to this problem is that it's response bias because when people are asked to keep a journal, they could not give the truth, whether they do it purposely or unpurposefully. All right, during the course of the study, the subjects will have their cholesterol levels measured each month by a doctor. The researchers will perform a significance test at the end of the study to determine whether the average cholesterol level for subjects who walk fewer miles each day is greater than those who walk more miles each day. So maybe at the end of this, they're going to look at all the people who walked very little, and they're going to get the mean for the people who walk a few, F for a few number of miles, and then they're going to get a mean for the group of people who walk um, more, a greater, a more number of miles. And they're going to compare these two means. They want to do an inference test to look at this. So select, selecting a random sample creates a reasonable representative sample of the target population. Explain the benefit of using a representative sample from the population. Okay, so this question is kind of going back to the idea of, hey, we want to be able to learn something from our data and, you know, apply it to a greater population. Why is it important to have a representative sample instead of a, I guess, non-representative sample? So first, let's make sure you know what the definition of a representative sample is. It means that your sample looks like your population. If your population has a bunch of young and old people, so does your sample. If your sample has a, if your population has a bunch of different ethnicities, so does your sample. If your population has a bunch of different genders, so does your sample. If your population has people that walk a lot and people that walk a little bit and people that walk a medium amount, then so does your sample. That's what we mean by representative. So why? is a representative sample necessary? Well, first, a representative sample is more likely to give a mean amount of miles walked that is less biased and has less variability. If the sample mean looks more like the population by being representative, then the mean of the sample more accurately reflects the mean of the population. So some of you, you know, the idea here is if your population is very representative, the mean of the population will represent that population. So if we want our sample to also reflect that population, we want our sample to also be representative. A representative sample will also make for unbiased inference about the difference between the mean cholesterol levels for all adult members of the target population who walk fewer miles and the mean cholesterol levels for all adult population or all adult members of the target population who walk more miles per day. Because remember at the end of the day, they did want to compare the mean number of miles walked by those people who walked few miles and those people that walked more. Now, this is not an experiment one more time because they didn't make some people walk less miles. They didn't make some people walk more. They just observed 100 people and what they walk and then they split them up. Okay, here's the top 50 my, um, walkers. Here's my bottom 50 walkers. Maybe it was as simple as that. But why do we want all of those 100 people to be representative is because then it's going to better represent our population. And then that means we have better data that we could use to make inferences towards the population about. So I always tell my students, having a sample that is truly random and representative is actually gonna produce less variability because it will create a value that's closer to the truth. And some people say, but if you have a sample of all old people, young people, um, young people, um, people that work out a lot, people that don't work out a lot, then you're actually going to have more variation. And this is where you got to really process what I'm about to say. We actually want more variation in our sample. Why? Because our population has a lot of variation too. But by having more variation in our sample, we actually have less variation towards the population that we're trying to represent. Ooh, maybe pause and replay that. That's a pretty big um, statement there that means a lot. All right, part C. Suppose the researchers conduct the test and find a statistically significant result. So maybe they actually find out that the mean amount that people, uh, for people that walk more miles, is greater than the mean amount for people who walk fewer miles in terms of their cholesterol, right? Their, their cholesterol um, is better. Well, would it be valid to claim this is true? Like, can I actually say that an increase walking causes a decrease in the average cholesterol levels. Can I officially say that the mean cholesterol levels for all people who walk a lot 
that's supposed to be a more for people who walk more, is greater than the true mean cholesterol levels for people who walk fewer miles? Well, no. Why? I've kind of been hinting at it all video here. It's not an experiment. If the data shows a significant result, it would seem logical that we can conclude that walking more will help reduce cholesterol levels. However, we can't use the word cause. We cannot say that increased walking will cause a decrease in cholesterol because this was not an experiment. There was no second group for comparison. We didn't take the 100 people and randomly assign a treatment to 50 of them and randomly assign a different treatment to the other 50. There was none of that. We just had 100 people tell us how much they walk, and then we looked at their cholesterol levels throughout the, throughout the um, study. The only conclusion that we can draw is that there is a negative association. That implies increased walking is associated with decreased cholesterol levels. We could say that, like when you do an obser observational study, you could actually learn a lot and you could definitely make statements about associations between two variables, but you cannot use the word cause until you have officially conducted a well-designed experiment. There are just too many confounding variables without more control in comparison. For example, people who walk more may be more concerned with eating a healthier diet, and eating better foods will lead to lower cholesterol. Or people who walk less might eat worse foods. So maybe there's a confounding variable of diet here. And if we don't control for that confounding variable by doing an experiment of some type where diet is controlled and everybody is given the same diet, then Again, it's just a reason why we can't use that word cause. So be very careful. A lot of kids will read that and be like, yeah, sounds great. But that word cause is the big problem. We could definitely claim there's a negative association here. Walk more, cholesterol goes down, but we can't say that A causes B. All right, keep that in mind. Pretty easy question, but some kids tend to not do well on a question like this because they don't want to write. They don't want to explain themselves. So please take the time to do that and you'll get a really good score.